And so what we're going to talk about today are a few things. So scaling starts with planning your work, organizing your team. Uh, it continues with testing, constantly testing things, seeing what works and what doesn't work as you start to ramp things up. Uh, also understanding your data. If you want to scale, there's going to be a lot of things, all these manual tasks and things that come in, changing ad prices, changing campaign budgets, all these things that you need to automate. So you need to be, be able to understand your data um, in a clearer way to scale effectively. Uh, we'll talk about automation and optimization, which are really our key features at Smartly, that if you want to scale and ramp up your advertising and spend and marketing on Facebook, these are going to be your tools that you're going to need with Smartly. So we'll start, we'll start with a story. Uh, about a client that I was working with that was an app install company. And so what they wanted to do, they had a small team and they wanted to scale. They just came out with this new app and they wanted to see how they could get a lot of people to install the app, they could, how they could spend more on Facebook and really attract more attention. But they were a bit lost on where to go. And maybe some, similar to some of you I met today, some people just started taking over their Facebook and Instagram advertising and some people have been doing it for a while. But um, what you want to do is you know, we, you need to learn a, lot, you know, a few things about your team and what results are important, how you can organize your time, how you can do things effectively. These are really important tasks that, whether you're a small team or a large team, you really need to do to build your groundwork for scaling. And so like I said, you, say, you might think to yourself, we're not a, an app install company, we do a lot of branding, we, we're an e-com company, we're a travel company. A lot of different verticals across the board are here today, which is, which is great. Um, and so a lot of the principles that I'm going to talk about today really involve Advertising in general, you know, you, what you want to do in general all across the board is you want to get customers, whether that's people to like your page or people to learn who you are, and you want to convert them in some way, whether that's a purchase or a page like or, you know, a link click, whatever it would be. So I think these should apply to you, whether, you know, you're branding, direct response, whatever. So when I talk about planning the work, um, it's easy to say you want to ramp up your team, you want to spend more. And this can really cause a lot of complications for your team. So when you're in a team with just one person or two people, it's easy. You don't really have to plan much outside of your head. You know when you're going to test things. You know when you're going to start campaigns and stop campaigns. You know a lot. And when you're with another person, just two people, you kind of know each other's strengths and weaknesses, so it's relatively easy. But when you're three people in a team or you have different offices and different locations, you need, you need a better system to organize the team and make sure you're aligned together. Um, so we emphasize that you know, as a team, you have a clear focus. So everyone knows that day, that week, that month, you know, what you're going to do, what the team's goal is. And having one essential goal is very important so that everyone is very focused. And lastly, you, you, need, you need to make sure that your team as a whole is understanding uh, the numbers as they come in, the results, so that you can analyze these and proceed forward. So at Smartly, um, some of you have worked with us before and some of you haven't, but the majority of our team is based in Helsinki, and the majority of the team is our engineers. And so engineers, you know, some of you who work at tech companies here, you know that they have a different sort of mindset and workflow uh, than maybe marketing or, you know, and advertising in general. And so we've learned a lot from them at Smartly uh, in a way to operate efficiently and effectively that I think might benefit you. So it's the, this idea of agile marketing, um, which you, know, you can Google this term and see what comes up. But the idea is, the main idea is making small changes over time to cause a large impact for your team. And this is, you know, essential to scaling. Making, uh, you know, visualizing the workflow, limiting the number of things you have going on at one time, um, and making processes explicit, making sure you, know, you have a lot of small changes, you have a lot of things that are going on, making sure that each member of the team has a task and is responsible for you know, all these different subparts. It's easy to say that the marketing team is going to start these campaigns, but really who's going to do it, right? Even if you're two, three, two or three people, you need to assign responsibility and make these small changes over time. So at Smartly, we have these things called daily stand-ups, which every morning the, mark, the uh, different engineering teams, they meet for 10 minutes. And they go over a you know, visualization of the projects that everyone's working on. And so this, it might sound kind of trivial. You know, It's easy enough to go to work and just start diving into your work and say, oh, we'll meet with my team once a week. But for this, we found it's a quick way to assess, does anyone need help? Who's working on what? What's the most important thing to focus on now? This is a great way to make sure the team is aligned, that people get help. Um, and that you can really scale effectively because, like I said, you're making small changes, and these changes are daily changes. So whether that's the way you work, whether you're stuck for you know, five minutes or an hour, these things are important. So you know, we emphasize integrating this sort of system, but also at the same time sort of having a long-term solution. A lot of companies sort of plan for you know, one, six months, or a year in advance. Uh, typically, we like to plan larger goals in three-month increments, so every quarter. 
And this is important for you know, seasonality for different companies, you know, that ad prices go up during the holidays. So you want to plan these things in advance so you know, um, you know what you're going to do. And one of the ways we do this is with these visualizations. So this is an example uh, of Asana, which is the project management software uh, online that you can, you can access. There's other similar ones like Trello. Um, but the, idea, the main idea here is that everyone sees what the whole team's doing. So on the left, you put your, all your ideas. If you want to test something, uh, you know, all the different ideas you have to ch make changes to your campaigns. And as a team, you decide on one of the most important ones. What are you going to prioritize first? Because you can't do everything at once. It's not possible. So you, you, you decide which are the most important ones, and then you start acting on those. And at the end, you, you have your learnings, right? So at Smartly, we say that we never integrate anything unless we've, you know, unless we've tested it effectively and learned something. So at the end, you can see everything that we've learned from all of our work throughout the, the day or the week or the month. But it's a great way, like I said, as a team in different offices and different locations, even if you're in the same office, everyone gets busy, it's a great way to be able to step back and see who's working on what and where the team is going in general. And like I said, we're a lot, we're most of our people that we work with at Smartly are engineers. So we've come from you know, different engineering backgrounds, mathematical backgrounds, scientific backgrounds. Uh, and something that we all have in common is that we need to trust the data. So it's really easy to intuitively say, oh, I think this ad is doing better than that ad, or this campaign is doing better based on today's performance. Maybe it is and maybe it isn't. But what we always say is we need, a, we need numbers. We need a test. We need statistical significance is a big word we use. And that's having enough events where you, know, you have enough variety in the data, where you, when you do see a change, you can tell whether it's really impactful to your campaigns or not. Uh, and like I said, you need to limit the amount of work, so assigning tasks to individuals is very important. So a case study um, that I have here is that we were working with this North American uh, coffee company recently, and they wanted to better analyze their data. They were putting a lot of spend towards Facebook and Instagram, and they wanted to understand, well, what's, what's working, what's not working, you know, which is important when you're scaling, and you have a lot of ads, you have a lot of campaigns, a lot of things going on. And so this ties back into the numbers. We have to understand the numbers underst and understand what's important. So we ran some tests with them um, on a variety of creatives, which you know, a lot of you do. You make so many different creatives. You don't know what's going to work, what's not going to work. Um, but this is sort of a visualization from Google Data Studio, which shows just the different performance of different creatives over time. Um, and so from this, what we, we were able to learn is that for them, is that lifestyle creatives worked a lot better than sort of staged images and staged creatives that looked you know, more typical of an ad. These sort of blended better into the news feed. These are more like someone you know, where you would take at a coffee shop of your, of your coffee, something that your friends might take, something like that. Those got a lot more attention. But we didn't understand this until we ran tests, we got numbers back, and we saw these results. And similarly, we, you know, we played around with the bidding. So initially, they had, this, they had this new app. So we were initially bidding for installs, trying to get the most installs from, um, you know, from Facebook and, and Instagram. And that worked well for a while. But as people were more aware of the app, you know, performance started to drop. So we changed our bidding strategy. Um, we changed to purchases, and we saw different changes there. But the way we do it and the way we encourage it in Smartly is to do what, you know, what we call, uh, it's called, we call it testing, but um, testing for statistical significance in, you know, in relation to what you're, you're trying to understand. So we tested two different bidding, bidding strategies, installs versus purchases. And you can see here, you know, we couldn't predict, predict this before, but we had different numbers of installs and purchases based on what we bid on Facebook. And so as you're moving along, it's easy to keep the same strategies with whatever it is for you're doing branding or reach campaigns. Uh, so I encourage you to play around with a couple of these different attributes that maybe you wouldn't normally you know, tinker with, do some tests, and see how the audience responds. And like I said, we need to keep it simple. Maybe you have 100 things you want to test. You want to test this ad versus that ad. You know, different bidding prices, different uh, campaign budgets, all these different things, different audience sizes. Uh, we really encourage you to only test you know, maybe two or three things at a time. Uh, it can impact performance negatively if you have too many tests on Facebook. It also just confuses you in a lot of ways because you, know, you don't really know what's being compared. Uh, it's easy to lose track of these things. So you know, make a list of the tests, prioritize what's the most important. You know, if you get the result from the test today, Will you make a change in your campaigns tomorrow? I mean, that's the most important test you need to do. Um, so organize your tests and make rules. Uh, like I said, a lot of people come from scientific backgrounds at our company. So like people come from, fi from finance. So you know, when a, say you're investing in stocks and it hits a certain price, you want to 
not invest in those anymore. So similarly with campaigns and, and ad sets, um, you, need to hit, you need, before you even start, we set our thresholds for the maximum and minimum, whether that's CPA or whether that's click-through rate, whatever it is. And then smartly, you can set up these triggers to stop spending you know, when things aren't doing well or things are doing well, you scale. So we encourage you to put these numbers, set these numbers and these limits before so that when you're under pressure you know, and your team is saying, oh, what's doing well, what's not doing well, what should we do? You already know what to do, right? You know if, you're, if your CPA is too high, you're going to shut it off. And you can set these up and smartly really easily. Um, <clears throat> so one example I have here is with this company called Chatbooks in the US, which basically takes all the pictures from your, your phone or your Instagram and makes them into photo books. And they were looking to improve their performance uh, on Facebook and Instagram, because that's where they were really spending most of their, their money. Um, so what they wanted to do was to do some different tests. <clears throat> so one, one thing we set up for them was a stop loss trigger. You know, which if you're spending too much, and like I said, your costs are too high, it'll stop um, the spend on those on different ads and ad sets. And from, so from integrating these different triggers and setting your limits for your tests, they were able to improve their performance and scale effectively. And so when it comes to knowing your data, a lot of, like I said, a lot of teams, you're busy, you're advertising on Facebook and Instagram and Google and, um, you know, and Amazon, all these different, re different platforms you're advertising on. So it's easy to lose track uh, and not understand your data in a really um, <clears throat> granular way. But what I encourage you to do, um, there's this book called Fooled by Randomness, which is kind of similar to what I talked about. It's going, a lot of people, you know, go based off intuition instead of the numbers. Um, it's a quick read, and I think it's really effective in encouraging you to really dig in a little bit to your numbers and under, try and understand at a deeper level what's doing well and not doing well. Um, and I think you'll, you'll get some insight from that book. And lastly, um, I have here the Let Facebook Optimize Your Audiences. So what we found at Smartly is that when you let Facebook, you, set, you, know, you set a seed audience, but you let Facebook optimize who your audience is, you get better, better performance. So maybe you sell you know, some sort of baby products or something, and so you know your target market is you know, mothers with kids between the ages of you know, X and Y, whatever it would be. So we, we, we encourage you to really just choose one or two attributes, open your audience up, and let Facebook optimize. Because what Facebook will do, it'll know, you know based on the past history, that your audience is mothers in this age group, but it'll also test different age groups, different, you know, different areas that you wouldn't normally test. And you'll get you know, a, a different sort of performance and hopefully improve performance by testing different markets that you, know, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't normally do by making a really narrowed audience selection. So Facebook is really good at that. And we always encourage really simple audiences to let Facebook optimize for you. Um, similarly, looking at attribution, uh, a lot of companies we work, we work with sometimes just look at last click, um, which could be effective in some ways, but another company we were working with sold these sort of higher end products, and, <clears throat> and they were looking at last click. And so, you know, if you're going to buy something that's really expensive, it's really not usually an impulse buy. You're really affected by ads, or you're thinking about it you know, in advance before. So I encourage you to, um, to look further down um, further down your attribution, because other things like display and you know, first impression, these things can be really important in, you know, in, the, li in the lifetime of your, um, of your customer journey. So I emphasize you to look at these different windows and, and before, before you make too many decisions to un better understand your customer and better understand your attribution. So when it comes to playing and scaling up at Facebook, you have a lot of advantages. When you can spend more on Facebook, you can test more. You can test bigger audiences. You can test you know, more ads and more products, um, all these sorts of things. And so Facebook, like I said, learns a lot faster than we can. And so what we do, instead of making all these manual changes, you know, we set small changes to our campaigns and our ad sets, and we let Facebook optimize things for us. And as you start to scale and build your advertising, you'll have more opportunities to do this. But as you do this, you need to make sure that you, sort of, that you have the basics right, that you're building the foundation for your team, you're understanding the data, and you're knowing uh, what your plan is for the future. And similarly, like I, talk, I talked to a few of you today, you're, you know, you're new to Facebook or you're one or two people on the team, it's easy to change an ad set, change a price today, or you know, change your campaign budget. But one of the coolest features and best features that, you know, that we've had for customers is this predicted budget allocation, which allocates your budget for you. So maybe some of you have used this or haven't, but what it does, it just redistributes your, your budget at the end of the day to the best performing ad sets based on our predictive model. So you know, that's just one aspect, but if you go onto our support page, there's lots of our articles and information about uh, automa automation and optimization. 
So as you start to have many more campaigns and ad sets and ads, it's too difficult to do all these manual tasks. It takes too much time to change the prices, change the bids. So let us do it for you, let the algorithms do it for you. This is what we found for our customers that have scaled most successfully. They've integrated optimization and automation features uh, the best. And so you know, just type that in on our support article if you want more information or ask your account manager. But these are the tools that are going to get you up to where you want to be. Um, and another case study I have here is from Deliveroo. So Deliveroo, I'm sure you're familiar with, is yeah, a food delivery service here. And there's even some of you here today from Deliveroo. Um, but they wanted to expand into Asia. And they wanted to improve their efficiency there, reduce the manual tasks that they had to do, like changing these prices and, and understanding ads. Um, and they wanted to maintain a certain CPA level. It's a quick video. Um, Smartly has been really instrumental for us to actually scale a lot of the digital advertising that we do on paid social. We were using another partner and actually we were finding it really difficult to, to reach bigger audiences, to spend the money and, and get the, the kind of um, um, ongoing performance that we were looking for. And with a tool um, like Smartly, we can just very quickly and easily build a lot, a lot of campaigns in a couple of clicks and, and start spending the money um, really efficiently with kind of optimization tools. It's about building a lot very, very fast in a couple of clicks, making it run and, and having that peace of mind that you have actual automated tools that will make sure that you're not overspending or not making your performance go crazy. It definitely helped scale the business um, across all of the markets we've been in. support that's been you know really really helpful for quick questions quick setups it it just feels like at any moment in any given day of the week if I'm stuck with something there's always going to be somebody to answer my question it's so like smiley makes everything easy So these are just some of the features that they use with the predicted budget allocation, which I talked about, uh, automatic, automatic creative optimization. So that'll change your ads, ads around for you and randomly uh, to see what performs best over time. And they were able to get some of these results by integrating a lot of these features that we have for you. Um, so lastly, I'll just talk quickly about uh, a, couple, a couple tools that we use at Smartly. Um, so we use Excel as a really important tool. You can download all the data that you get from Smartly, input it into Excel, and run, you know, get different charts and cool things like that. Uh, the second one is Tableau, which is a paid service. Uh, we have Python and R, which are more coding-based, but they have really great libraries for analyzing data. Um, we have Google Data Studio, which is a relatively new thing from Google. But you can easily put your data from Smartly and get a live feed of it into Google Data Studios, and you can build really cool uh, visualizations like this. This is from one customer to look at your main KPIs and metrics. So a lot of what we do when you're scaling, like it, it's really easy to get bogged down with the numbers. One of the best tools I can recommend is to put your data into a visualization format so you can see trends over time. You can see what's working well, what's not working well. This helps you understand the data, communicate it better, and pinpoint you know different um, different things that are going on. So we talked about planning your work today. Um, like I said. Organizing your team, making, you have a, making sure you have a simple and efficient team, um, limiting your tests, understanding your data and the rules, setting limits for scaling, and using these data analysis tools to better understand your data. Like overall, I think if you're trying to scale, you should you know, talk to your account manager, look into these, um, the, the options that we have for automation and optimization, and these will help you get to where you want to go.